Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with a legendary arcade game video for you today. This is Atari's original Pong arcade game from, I believe the prototype came out in 72 or the first one came out in 72 and the commercial ones either came out in late 72 or 73. This one here almost certainly is from 1973. This is an original Pong cabinet. Everything on it pretty much is original. And it's got some paperwork with it. I'm going to show you here in a minute. That's really cool. Uh, this does not belong to us. We did not buy this. This belongs to our buddy Adam down at the beach. If you ever go to Player's Choice Games in the mall in Myrtle Beach, you can see this Pong. He'll probably have it on display down there. But uh, he sent it up here to us to look over it and fix it up a little bit. And so we've been working on it. I filmed a separate video of us fixing it. So I'll, uh, I'll upload that later. You can check it out. But I figured we'd do a separate video just showing what the thing was constructed like and uh, what's inside of it and playing it a little bit. Um, but yeah, this thing is super cool. It's also, this particular one is also in very nice shape. Um, it's held up really well over the years, is nice and clean, and has been taken care of. So we'll do a little overview of it. The left side is a little bit of wear down there on the bottom, but nothing too bad. I don't think this is for sale. I don't think Adam sells any of his stuff, <laughs> but it is cool. And then down at the front, there's like a slant. There's a sloped board down there. You've got this little coin mech here on the front. That button is the coin return button, and it takes quarters. Then you've got the famous yellow bezel on the front of it. As far as I know, all of this is original. Uh, it's got smooth black tea molding on it. Very similar to what they put on uh, their other games later. This uh, Pong name is kind of embossed on it. It's kind of silk screened on it. And right above the monitor, there's a little sticker that says, first player to score 15 points wins. I think you could change that because I believe there's a switch on the board to change it to first player to 12 or something like that. This, Of course, this was based on tennis. I'm not a big tennis guy, so I don't know. Uh, but um, maybe in certain... It, forgive me if I'm completely ignorant of this, but I believe in certain countries you play to 12 and in other countries you play to 15. Does that sound right? So that may have been why they did that. And then it's got this uh, original control panel here. You can see it's actually kind of thick, the metal. That's probably eighth of an inch or close to it. Player one, and then I don't know how to pronounce that, but you know, that was the early Nolan Bushnell Atari stuff. Deposit quarter, ball will serve automatically. Avoid missing ball for high score. There you go. Player two, Atari Inc. Proudly made in Santa Clara, California. I believe these are the original knobs. There's different ones on different machines, but I'm pretty sure, just looking at pictures online and people have had discussions about it, I think the early machines had these knobs. So when we first got it in, I was looking at the serial number on the back, and it says, it's going to be hard to see this because it, it's, it's just barely in there. Let's uh, see if I can tell without looking through the. Oh. You know what? Let me get, let me get a light so we can see it a little better. Okay, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but I believe that says V P I. Or maybe yeah, I think it says V P I model V P I. And then the serial number is F F O one eight. Okay. So reading online, the, I believe the way they did their serial numbers for this game was ZZ001 was the first game, and they ran up to ZZ999. And then they did AA001 through AA999, and then they jumped back to YY001 through 999, and uh, 
kind of ping pong back and forth like that. Okay, so if we do the math on that, that's the 18th one of FF, and it, like I said, it ping pong back and forth. So A B C D E F. That's the uh, and it started with Z. So that'd be uh, in the 12,000 range. So it's the 12,000th and 18th one. It looks like it's the 18th one, but I think there were 12,000 before it. Um, if you if you see these two, sometimes some of them will have slightly different setups. So this is a Hitachi P-02 television. In the in the video uh, that we will do later, we um, we showed reworking that. You can see that it says use one amp fuse only. And they've got the transformer and the fuse and everything and the the uh, meter mounted here. The meter says 6,743. It may have rolled over, or that may be it. You know, actually, we'll, let's remember that. 6,743. Um, some of these that you see, all of the stuff will be mounted on this side. They changed things around in production because they were just using off-the-shelf parts for some of this stuff. So the, uh, the TVs, for instance, there's different ones and different models. Someone has marked where the wires and things go. And if you look really close on the screws on the TV, they've actually color-coded it too. The green one goes on the green screw, the red on the red screw. When you get inside of there, the, the wires that are on the back of that do not hook to the TV tuner anymore. They've, they've disconnected that and hacked it a little bit. The wires go underneath the board and to a different spot. So basically they took out the tuner by cutting it loose. It's still in there, but it's just not hooked up. And the wire, the composite signal from the video goes into the TV and straight into the board uh, into one of the last sections of the video signal. This red one, I believe, is the audio. I may have that wrong, though, but um, the audio also goes directly into the board. The wire comes out and goes over to uh, wherever the audio is amplified at. So there is a cardboard, like a black cardboard bezel around the monitor. We put that back in. Uh, and it's just an off-the-shelf TV. You can see it's still got the handle on the top of it. Little portable 13-inch TV. I believe Hitachi may have actually called that their 12-inch TV. Usually in um, in Japan, they, they measure a certain way, and in America, they measure a certain other way. So that a 12-inch in Japan could be a 13-inch in America, but uh, that says made in Taiwan, so I don't know if that applies to Taiwan or not, but I believe when I looked it up, it did say 12-inch. All right, I keep having customers come in. So, like I was saying, that's the... Um, that's the coin mac, the back of it, and then there the coin pan is just a bread pan. Let me see if I pull it out. So it says nine and five eighths by five and a half by two and three quarter. Very cool. And they've made a little marking here showing you the, how the wiring goes on the coin switch. And then over here, of course, is the board that runs it all with the, um, like I said, I don't know how you pronounce it. S Y Z Y G Y Pong. And then there's an E, that may be a revision of the board or something or how they were keeping track of how many of these suckers they sold, which was a lot from what I understand. I don't know if that cap is original, that big one there. It sure looks original, but it may have been replaced at some time. Well, looks like it says 1973 on it, date code. Usually that cap is laying down, it's an axial one, but that's a more of a snap cap that they've installed. But that board has never even had any chips repaired. Now, since I said that, well, maybe it has. I, I didn't take it out or anything. Since I said that, It'll probably die on me, but so far, so good. So with all of that said, I want to show you the back door because that's something special, okay? And again, this isn't mine. This belongs to Adam. So here's the original back door, right? And on the other side of the back door, inside the cabinet, there is some paperwork. So we're going to check out that paperwork. 
So in my video when I was repairing it, th these are the schematics for the monitor. They're still stapled on the back and I was able to repair it without unstapling them. I took some pictures of the inside but I didn't end up using them. Um, but that's pretty cool. Right? And then you have this up here. It says, let's read it. Adjustment procedure for Pong video game. This machine has been fully tested and adjusted prior to leaving the factory. It has been designed to be as maintenance free as possible. An effort has been made to reduce the heat generated by the machine to increase the lifetime of the components. The following adjustments can be made if the operator feels they are needed. The contrast, brightness, volume, horizontal, and vertical hold controls on a television set still operate as in a normal TV. And I had to adjust all of them. The end of the game can be set to occur at a score of 11 or 15. That's 11. Damn, I'm going to have to reshoot the whole video. Mm. Huh. Let's keep going. <laughs> can be set to occur at a score of 11 or 15 by adjusting the slide switch on the printed circuit board. Two labels are provided to affix to the front of the machine to indicate where the game will end. So either at 11 or 15. Two potentiometers are provided on the circuit board to adjust the travel of the paddles. We did that in the first, in the uh, repair video too. Turn the turn the front panel player knobs fully counterclockwise. Oh, I didn't read this. Then adjust the potentiometers on the circuit board until the paddle is as far down as you want it to go. And you got to be pretty careful about that because if you uh, if you leave just the smallest little gap at the top or the bottom, the damn ball will find that little gap to where you can't hit it even if you want to. Four, an anti-slam switch is located next to the coin mechanism. That's been uh, disabled on this one. It's not there. This can be adjusted to prevent game from starting automatically when the machine is, st is struck forcefully. So they've removed that on this game, and the two wires are just connected together. The Pong computer is fully guaranteed for a period of one year. Oh, man. So we've been out of warranty for 20, uh, 45 years. Is that right? 45? Yeah. This can be adjusted to prevent. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Should any after the date of purchase, should any questions arise, contact your dealer or Atari Inc. Santa Clara, California. Telephone number. Here you go, folks. Four zero eight two four seven forty eight twenty five. Wonder who owns that now. Okay, so that's all very cool. But here's the coolest part. Somebody put a piece of paper inside the back door when they first bought the damn thing, which was March 14th, 1973. And then VPI, like we said, FF-018, that's the serial number of it. It matches the back of the cabinet. It's still still uh, inside of the game. So March 14th, they bought it. And it says in the same handwriting or whatever, the same ink, meter 00058. So that's where they started, right? So March 14th, it was at 58. Down here it says service calls and dates. So they 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 wanted you to uh, write the meter down and then write down if you had to redo any repairs, right? Now, you remember, even though there weren't very many arcade games around when Pong came out, and it was, what, the second one? There were tons of pinball machines around and tons of jukeboxes around. So these operators already had pinball uh, pinballs that they were running. So you already had locations with uh, electromechanical pinballs in them and things like that. Um, so these would have been added into some of those same locations. So they already had a system like this down uh, for the pinballs. But uh, March 14th, they ha they had 58 on the meter. Down here is service calls, March 16th. So that's two days after they bought it. And they wrote 68100. So what the hell does that mean? Who knows? The 17th, they bought it on the 14th. So three days later says coin changer was bent okay and they have the serial number at two at the meter at 230 so in three days from buying it I mean this could have been they could have set it in the 16th they probably didn't put it in the day they bought it so in three days uh, the meter was up to 230 so uh, 172 plays is that right yeah, so 172 plays, quarter a piece. So it made like 40 bucks. Okay, so then they go in on the 24th, which is exactly a week later, 
and they first put down the, the meter as 91900. So somebody must have been reading it backwards or something, or they were dyslexic or something. <laughs> I don't know if you can be dyslexic and get five numbers in a row backwards, but 00919. So in the next week, in one week, it went from 230. Damn, it must all be screwed up. They must have not been reading it right, because look what's below it. 328, which would have been 11 days later from the 230. They're now at 753. So 523 in 11 days. So they were getting 50 plays a day almost. Um, so it's making like 40, it's, it's making like mm, 12, 15 bucks a day. So it's not burning the place down, right? All right. Uh, and then 428. So this is a month later. So it goes from 328 to 428. That it had not quite 400, no, a little bit more than 400 plays, 100 bucks. So it was making about $25 a week by that time. 519.73. Uh, it had gone up to 17.73. So that was uh, three weeks. It had played 600 times. 50 bucks a week at that point. So maybe they were moving it, you know, maybe they moved it to a new location then. Uh, six five, so that's another two weeks. It had been played um, 480 times. So that's uh, 120 bucks in three weeks. Or I guess that's two weeks. So that's kind of what it was doing at this at this for this guy. And then so they ran out of space at the bottom, June 5th. And so they started going up here, June 8th, they were up to 2316. So that's three days later from 2254. So that's 46, 62, 62 plays in three days, five bucks a day. And then by the 16th, which was another eight days later, uh, it had been played almost 300 times. So I did pretty good that week. But then they stopped writing it down. You've also got this rogue one up here. From June 19th. Oh yeah, okay. So they wrote up here June 19th, but then they also wrote it down here because the guy must have been like, wait a minute, where am I supposed to write this? Oh, wait a minute, that's a service scope. Uh, hmm. It should be up here where it says meter. Let me put it up here. So, who knows if it was retired then? I don't I don't know what year all the other stuff came out. Like how quick after Pong that everything else came out. You know, they they did Pong doubles and all that, so it could have been that the next game was already out. But let's let's think about it this way. Uh, they bought it in March. Three months later, it had been played twenty six hundred times. So that's uh what? 650 times, I mean 650 bucks, and they split it in half with the location, so they'd made like 325 bucks on it. Hell, they paid more than that for it. I bet it was at least a thousand dollars. So, did this thing ever pay for itself? This particular one? What was our meter says 6,700 plays. So even if all those were played, were paid. That's what, 1600 Math is hard, folks. $1,600. and But you split it all in half with the location. But you don't, you know. So the operator would pay for the machine. You put it in the location. You give the location half the money for putting it in the location. So the operator probably never broke even on this. And it, that, it could be that in certain places they were making a fortune and other places they weren't making a fortune. It could have been that uh, March 73 was too late. Maybe, they'd all, maybe they all made their money in January or something or late 72. I don't know. And uh, maybe the, the Pong doubles or whatever the, the other ones were, maybe those ones were the ones that made a, a ton of money. But certainly a great piece of history. So I'll put the back door back on it. And uh, I'll set up the tripod and I'll play it a little bit, but I'm the only one here. I don't have any, if maybe somebody else comes in, they can play a two-player game with me. But if not, we'll just point it up. You can hear the 
the sounds. I think there's two of them. And uh, you can just see what it does whenever uh, it's up and running. All right, folks, so it's as simple as that. There's not much to it. You can see whenever the uh, ball goes off the top of the screen, it actually comes on the very bottom of the screen. But I couldn't, there's no adjustment to do the position, like the vertical position. So basically the screen needs to be brought down just a little bit. But that may have been how they were back in the day, I don't know. So I'm gonna get a quarter so you can hear what it sounds like when the quarter drops. So we'll actually coin it up. And like you saw, it has that metal, uh, that metal bread pan in there. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it's got like a little trail that you can see because the the brightness. Whoop! Went over me, folks. <laughs> I moved. A, I was trying to put a little English on it. Oh, it didn't go all the way down. You know, the only way I'm going to win is if I outsmart myself. This may go on all night. <laughs> Slid it right by me. I don't know if you I can't see the screen because I'm so into the game, but in person, there's like a little trail behind the ball because it's so bright compared to the the contrast, you know. That's pretty cool. A lot of times when we mess with like an asteroids, it'll be like that too. I guess if you played it without the lights off, it wouldn't really do that as much. Oh. I bet it won't go. I bet you can't get it stuck. They probably put something in it where it, you can't uh, get it stuck between the two paddles. It probably won't let it bounce off of it because it would have to bounce. Well, no, I guess it could bounce crooked and get stuck too, but it probably has some kind of circuit where it won't let it go the exact same way more than twice in a row or something like that. Unknown caller, it said. <laughs> Boy, it's getting intense, people. I've got a hell of a... Oh, man! You know what's crazy, too? Is I'm left-handed. So you'd think that the left-handed player would do better. Let's see, watch, it's gonna bounce crooked. Yep, see, there must be a circuit. There must be a circuit in it where it won't let it bounce. Damn, slid it right by me. There must be a circuit in it where it won't let it bounce the exact same more than like twice, so that it'll never get stuck or whatever. Well, there you go, that is the old school Atari Pong working great in my opinion. That's pretty cool. You know, there's no way that they thought that these things designed in 1972 would still be working in 2019. That's a long time, people.
that's pretty wild, right? It's a real piece of history, though. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave your comments below. Did you ever play an actual Pong back in the day? Or did you play many, one of the many copies? You know, they made a ton of different ones. Um, we had a video on here of a winner that we were working on. We said, I guess we still need to put up the rest of that video. Uh, a Midway winner. They made just a, a ton of copies, and uh, some of them were licensed, some of them weren't. And Atari, I believe, made 16 different versions of Pong eventually. So there were 15 sequels to this little game that were various types of Pong. They even had a Snoopy Pong. And uh, something we talked about in one of the other videos was uh, when this first came out, they thought that this was like what video games were. So all the other companies, they just invented other tennis games that were exactly like this. So they just had different cabinets and stuff, but it was the same game. Just like if you were playing tennis, you know, you don't really change the rules or anything. You just play tennis. Tennis is tennis. It's fun. So they thought that video games, arcade games, were going to be, the computer video games were going to be tennis, basically, <laughs> over and over again. Now, of course, computer space had came out before this. but So a lot of the copies were the exact same game. You played the same, looked the same, the screen looked the same. Everything was the same. And then they started changing them a little bit and made it where there were two paddles on each side. And then they said that was hockey or uh, this is soccer, you know. But still very cool. So leave your comments below. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And if you want to see it in person, go check out Adam's Place at the Beach. And uh, we will see you on the next video.